Hello and welcome. We're here at Vanden High School in Fairfield, California, where we're getting set to bring you the action. The Solano Mudcats are playing host to the San Francisco Seals. Thank you for tuning in with us today on the Solano College Sports Network. I'm Stephen Babb. Joining me in the booth is Nathan Farmer. And later on the top of the fourth, I will be joined by Nate McKay. So, Nathan, we got a chance last night to call our first Mudcats game. And what do you take away from that that night? Uh, the pitching overall was solid. Aside from the uh, top of the eighth inning, the hitting is also very good. They've got lots of talent out there. It's just a matter of putting a solid nine innings together. And let's get to the lineups for the San Francisco Seals. We've got leading off playing center field, Zach Campbell. Over in right field, we've got number 16, Rob Lujan. At shortstop, Nate Petrov playing first base, Jackson Millett. Over in left field, we've got Donnie Bendo. Marty Cole is at second base. Flynn Morrison's behind the dish. Anthony McDougal, DH. Brandon Wynn at third base. And Will Moscato will be towing the rubber for the Seals this evening. So we get underway. Zach Campbell steps in. Toe the rubber for the Mudcats is Cody Switzer. And we're started off with a ball at 5.05. Switzer pitched his freshman year at Napa Valley College this past season. Before that, he pitched here at Vanden High School. And that is hit a chopper just foul down the third baseline. That's Josh Medina over there in the hot corner for the Mudcats. The Switzer gets set and delivers the 1-1 pitch. And that is a big cut, swing and a miss to make it one ball and two strikes. The outfield for your Mudcats going left from right. We've got Nick Pfeiffer, Willington Balsley, and James Harwell. And that breaking ball doesn't quite break enough. It's two and two. Clockwise wise around the infield, we've got Josh Medina, Eric Robles, Jason Pridey, and Justin Banks. And that is hit a chopper just foul once again down the third baseline. So the count will remain two and two. Uh, behind the dish for the Cats is Christian Harkey. And as I mentioned, Cody Switzer on the bump. Harkey pitched an inning of shutout relief last night. That ball is grounded over to the third. Fielded cleanly by Medina. Justin Banks on the one hop, and they get the first out of the game. Switcher's got a 357 ERA. And a 3 0 record for Solano. And this is Rob Lujan, right fielder for the Seals. And that first pitch is low. And the 1-0 pitch. And that is hit and dribbled foul. That'll even up the count, one and one. And the 1-1 pitch, and that is hit high down the first baseline. Running back is Banks going, going, and just out of reach and unable to make a play. It's a little breezy out here today, but nothing compared to what we experienced last night. Gale force winds. Yeah, I would say that's probably about 10 mile an hour winds when we were having maybe 30, 40 plus mile an hour winds last night. Oh yeah, it was definitely above 40. I'd go 50, 60. Right now it's a sunny 77 degrees as we are underway here in the top of the first inning. It's a 1-1 count to Luan, and that pitch just misses outside. Two balls and one strike. Oh, excuse me, two balls and two strikes. Two foul balls. And that pitch is low. 
So looking at a full count here. And that's a big swing and a miss for the first strikeout for Cody Switzer. That's going to bring up shortstop Nate <coughs> Petrov. Left-hander digs in, taps the plate. Switzer looks in for the signs and gets set to deliver. And that's low and outside. Petrov played this season for West Valley College and he'll be transferring to Vanguard University. And that is hit sharply into center field. There is Ballsley to pick it up and toss it in. So Petrov will reach safely the single. It's going to bring up first baseman Jackson Millett. The two outs left brings us the first baseman number 15, Jackson Millett. So we've got two out and one on for Millett as he digs in. And that pitch is in there on the outside corner for a called strike. Wind's starting to pick up just a little bit here. I anticipate it will as the night goes on. And checking over at the runner at first. Sliding back easily is Petrov. Switzer checks once again, gets set from the stretch, and that is high. So that's going to even up the count. One ball and one strike. Switzer checks the runner. Now is on the rubber. And the 1-1 one -one pitch. And that is a big cut right through that fastball to make it a 1-2 count. It's a decent lead over there by Petrov at first. Nice secondary lead, and that pitch just misses the zone. So you don't have to count 2-2. Two and two. And the pitch, and that is a big swing and a miss for the second strikeout. And that will end the inning. So coming up, leading off for the Mudcats, we'll, we've got Wellington Balsley, Josh Medina, and James Harwell. Excited to be here for Welcome Week. Solano Community College welcomes all of our students back. We want students to feel welcome, to be part of a vibrant community and understand that we go out of our way to make sure that you feel that there's a place here for you and a range of services to support you through your academic study. Hi, my name is Vanessa, treasurer of the ASSC here at Solano Community College. And today we're just here handing out scantrons, pencils, coffee, free hot chocolate, and all this stuff just to get our students um, to feel comfortable on the campus. I'm staffing the Ask Me table this week where we are answering students' questions and promoting the Solano College Promise, which makes your first year free if you attend full-time. Hi, my name is McKaylee Mates. I'm the president of the Drama Club here on Solano's campus. We're here informing kids about what we're about. And um, we're here at Welcome Back Week, kind of introducing the new students into what we do here on campus. Um, we're here with a lot of different clubs. If you can make it down, come see us. We're here in the bottom half of the first inning. So we take a look at the starting pitcher for the Seals is Will Moscato. A right-hander up there getting his warm-up pitches in. Leading off for the Mudcats will be Wellington Balsley. Wellington has been balling this year. He's hitting 442, has two triples and eight doubles. Yeah, we got the chance to get to know uh, Wellington this season as he was working as the PA announcer for the Solano Falcons. We had him on our broadcast a few times. Yeah, he redshirted for the Falcons last season. Looking to get some 
playing time here in the summer before starting up at Solano. So the lefty steps in and gets ready for the first pitch here from Moscato. And that is a hard fastball, just missing the inside corner. Moscato pitched for McAllister College, where he was used mostly as a relief pitcher this season. And that is fouled, like off the helmet or maybe the chest protector. So it's a 1-1 count. Wellington is a great leadoff hitter. Not only is he getting on base and hitting for average, he's also got 11 stolen bases. And only one strikeout as that is chopped up the middle, but right there is Petrov throwing over to first and just getting the out as Wellington was showing off some speed there. It's going to bring up Josh Medina. Medina's hitting 385. The triple, six doubles, and a home run as the righty steps in. And that breaking ball is fouled off at the plate right over to our booth. <laughs> and the 0-1 pitch is right in there knee high. So a quick 0-2 count to Medina. James Harwell on deck the right fielder for the Mudcats. And that is in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. And the one-two pitch. And that is also fouled off at the plate. So Medina will stay alive. And the count will stay at one and two. Medina is coming off a solid year for Sonoma State where he hit 280 for the Seawolves. Moscato shakes off the sign, finds one he likes, and delivers. Like it might have been a little bit of a slider outside corner. So two and two now to Josh Medina. And that is hit down the right field line, but foul. Medina just a little bit late on that one. We'll stay at two balls and two strikes. Deep breath from Moscato. Small step back and the pitch. And that breaking ball is fouled off out of play. Looked like Moscato caught him reaching out in front on that one. Looked like Medina was expecting something a lot faster than the curveball. And that is low in the dirt. So from 0-2 to a full count. And 3-2 pitch. And that is hit into right center. Making his way over is Luan, Luhan, and he makes the catch to put Medina away. So two outs for James Harwell. <coughs> Harwell's hitting 333. The lefty right fielder steps in. The Mudcats are coming in today at four and six, and the Seals are three and six. And that is hit into left field. That will be good for a single from Harwell. First pitch swinging. It's going to bring up the DH for Solano, Jack Pridey. 
We also have his brother playing in this game, playing second base, and that's Jason Pridey. And that pitch just misses. It's a decent lead over there at first, and that is fouled back, so that'll even up the count at one and one. As the right-handed Pratty steps back in the box, Moscato checks on the runner. And from the stretch, that pitch misses low and outside, so two on count. And that pitch is also fouled back. Two balls and two strikes. That boy brings out some fresh baseballs for home plate umpire. And the 2-2 pitch. And that misses outside. So party looking at a full count here. Scotto checks the runner, takes a deep breath, and gets set. And a big swing and a miss to end the inning, and Moscato's first K of the day. And that's going to do it here for the first inning. When we come back, it'll be Bendo, Cole, and Morrison. I'm Rusty Mays. I'm one of the instructors here at the Solano Community College Aeronautics Program here at the Net Tree Airport. Here at Solano Community College, we really see them thrive and learn. We have a 100% pass rate with our examiner. I'm Kevin Spolstra, instructor, Solano Community College Aeronautics. At Solano Community College Aeronautics Program, we teach the students aviation maintenance. We teach them the general subjects, the airframe subjects, and the power plant subjects. The students will also be prepared to pass their multiple tests from the FAA. At Solano Community College, we also have a partnership with Delta Airlines. Through Delta Tech Ops, students that complete the program, they will be considered for employment as an aviation maintenance technician. We are still scoreless here as we enter the top half of the second inning. You're going to see the left fielder, Donnie Bendo, leading off for the San Francisco Seals. So we take a look at Switzer finishing up his warm ups. That's Kesher, catcher Christian Harkey throwing down to second base. Bendo grabbing a little dirt for grip. Going batting gloveless as the righty steps in. And the pitch from Switzer. And that is hit high into left field. Going back is Pfeiffer back back and wave goodbye. That is long gone by Donnie Bendo. And say that was a no doubter off the bat. Yeah, first pitch, first swing. And it was gone. So the Seals will take a 1-0 lead here in the top of the second. It's a little difficult here from our booth as we're, we've got some visual obstacles to get by. And, but that pitch, no doubt it sounded off the bat like it had some distance. That's going to bring up Marty Cole, second baseman for San Francisco. Lefty takes a deep breath after watching that pitch miss the zone. 
And that is fouled off at the plate. Cole is coming off a solid year for Niagara University all the way up in New York. We get 265. And the 1-1 one -one pitch, and that is a big swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Switzer likes it and delivers. And that is a big breaking ball for the third strikeout. That was a great pitch there by Switzer. Now up, the catcher, Flynn Morrison. It's fun seeing all these players from different areas and different schools all come together for a little summer baseball. And that is fouled back. Yeah, Morrison, he's all the way from uh, Melbourne, Australia. And he came here to play baseball. He played for uh, Bay College. It's a little bit of a distance there. And the 0-1 pitch, and that is breaking ball. That is hit, but softly. Oh, and there's the third baseman, Medina, to get it and throw over for the second out. Looks like that might be two rolls it short, but Medina coming over to cut it off and make the out. So up now is the designated hitter, Anthony McDougal. I appreciate the stirrups that McDougal is sporting. And the pitch from Switzer. It's in there for a called strike. When I played, I definitely had my stirrups up high. <laughs> kind of an old school look nowadays. And that is it high and out of play. Oh, and two. McDougal played his last two years at Los Madonos, so he's now committed to play at Cal State East Bay. Switzer shakes off a pitch, finds one he likes, and delivers a big swing and a miss from McDougal. So here early on in the game, that is four swing miss strikeouts for Switzer. It's going to do it for the top half of the second inning, but not before the Seals can take a 1-0 lead. Leading off for the Mudcats, we've got Justin Banks, Christian Harkey, and Nick Pfeiffer. When I'm not here, I'm here. And when I'm not here, I'm here! The Seals lead 1-0 here. So we're getting set to start the bottom half of the second inning. Leading off is first baseman Justin Banks. Justin's hitting 408. Um, that's good for a second place on the team. But he leads with three home runs. He also adds in eight doubles. So the lefty's got some pop. Yeah, he's coming off a very good year for Coppin State where he hit 394, good enough to earn first team all MIAC honors. And the first pitch from Moscato, and that one is in there for a called strike. I actually played a couple of years in high school with Justin Banks. And that is fouled off at the plate. He has always been a very good hitter. At least as long as I've known him. 
And the 0-2 pitch from Moscato. And that breaking ball misses the outside corner. One ball and two strikes, two banks. And that is a big swing and a miss. The ball hit the dirt, though. And Morrison will throw it down. It's going to bring up the catcher, Christian Harkey. Harkey made what we believe is his pitching debut last night. It was he a did. very entertaining <laughs> ordeal watching him try to get in some of those pitches into the strike zone. <laughs> the Ricky Vaughn impression. And that breaking ball is fouled off. Ricky Vaughn, of course, a wild thing from Major League. But he's behind the dish tonight, so... We'll see how this goes. That arm could be good for throwing down to second. And that breaking ball misses the zone. Harkey's hitting 325. He's got two home runs and four doubles. And that is in there for a called strike two. And the one-two pitch. And that breaking ball is hit into left field. Going back is Bendo, and it's over his head. Making his way over to second is Harkey. And he will reach safely with a stand-up double. And that'll be his fifth double on the season. Great piece of hitting there. That'll bring up Nick Pfeiffer. Left fielder for the Mudcats. Mudcats jerseys yesterday had one of their nicknames, Dirty Fish, which I quite enjoy. So he's looking at one out with a runner on second. Pitch from Moscato. That is a big swing and fouled off the catcher there. So 0-1. Here early on, it looks like Moscato's hitting his pitches and hitting his marks. He's been able to keep the ball down and do a pretty good job with his control. It's a nice mix of fastballs and breaking balls. As first baseman Jackson Millett comes over to have a little talk with Moscato. Not your normal mound visit. Scotto checks on the runner and the pitch. That breaking ball is down on the dirt. They'll even up the count, one and one. Pfeiffer's hitting 356. And that is hit high and out of play. Along with that 356 average, he's got a couple triples and a few doubles. And the one two is fouled off as well, so the count remains. And Piper stays alive. Decent lead over there by Harkey. And that is hit into left field. It is hit. And a great diving catch there by Donnie Bendo. Harkey goes back, unable to tag up. It was a great catch out there by Bendo. Looking like Superman taking flight out there. Take another look at and that. And that is hit catch. into left field. <laughs> <laughs> There's Bento 
<laughs> stretching himself out. It's going to bring up a second baseman, the other Pridey, Jason. And <laughs> Jason takes the ball down low. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was just me that time. <laughs> And the 1 0 pitch to Pridey, and that misses outside. There's two out, runner on second. And that pitch misses a little high. So 3 0 to Jason. Jason's hitting a buck 90. And 21 at bats. And the pitch. That is in there at the knees. Make it a 3 1 count. And the pitch from Moscato. And that is there as well. Pridey may have thought a little differently, but now it is a full count. And a 3-2 pitch. And that is hit high into shallow center field. Rushing in is Campbell. And he makes the catch to end the inning. So a runner stranded for Solano. The Seals still lead 1-0. to zero. Due up here in the top of the third inning for San Francisco, we've got third baseman Brandon Wynn. He'll be followed by the top of the order, Zach Campbell, then Rob Lujan. Seals start the third inning with a 1-0 lead. Lead off the second inning, Donnie Bendo hit a solo shot to left field. Other than that, Switzer's been pretty good, only giving up a single. It's got four strikeouts. A right-hander's been doing a good job hitting his location pitches here. So we take a look at him warning, warming up. Kind of like Moscato, his counterpart. A nice mix of fastballs, off-speed pitches, and breaking balls. Get to take a look at our, for the first time at Brandon, as the righty gets set to step in the box. So Medina had a quick little chat for Switzer. Everybody is set. And that breaking ball is there for a called strike. Like right at the knees on the outside corner. And the 0-1 pitch. 
And that one is down low in the dirt. Even up the count at one ball and one strike. A little bit more wind here in the third. As that pitch misses outside. Two and one. Looks like Harky's going to go out and have a quick chat with Switzer. It's like a pretty straight up defensive alignment out there. And the 2 1 pitch. And that is hit right back up the middle. Right there, making a good stab out of his rubbles. He throws Ooh. over way off the line, but a good job by a Harkey to back up that throw. Yeah, that uh, was a very ill advised throw. He was off balance, and that throw, if uh, Harkey hadn't been there, it probably would have gone into the Seals' dugout. It was a good job to keep it from going into center field, but that would have been a really tough throw to make. So that's going to bring up center fielder Zach Campbell. He grounded out to third base to lead off the game. Let's win with a modest lead over it first. Takes a couple more steps. And the pitch from Switzer. That is down low. Good job by Harkey there making the stop. Switzer finds a pitch he likes. And that is hit into left field. It's going to drop. And it looks like Wynn is going to stay at second. So back-to-back -back singles here for San Francisco. It's going to bring up right fielder Rob Lujan. Lujan, excuse me. As Luhan takes his time stepping in, getting the signs from his third base coach. Big right-hander. And that breaking ball misses outside. Looks like the, both shortstop Robles and second baseman Jason Pridey taking turns covering the bag out there at second, then rushing back to position. And the 1-0 pitch, and that is hit well into left field. And Medina is not going to be able to get there to it. It goes to the wall. Coming in to score is win. Following him is Campbell, and reaching second with a stand-up double is Luhan. So San Francisco with a 3-0 lead here in the top of the third. It's going to bring up shortstop Nate Petrov. He singled back in the first. Yeah, Switzer just hasn't been as sharp this inning, just making mistakes, leaving the ball out over the plate. And that is just a bit outside. Petrov steps in, still nobody out, runner on second. The lefty with a nice straight up and down batting stance, and that breaking ball gets his way in there. Even up the count. One and one. Switzer checks the runner, but a very short lead over there. And that is hit high, but softly back behind second base. Rubbles calls everybody off and makes the catch. The Switzer did a good job there of getting Petrov off balance. Had him out in front there, getting him to pop out. Now up. Jackson Millett. He struck out to end the first inning. As Switzer looks in. And that is in there for a called strike. Oh, 
Looks like Medina is hugging the line over there at third. And that second base is down in the dirt. That's going to send Lujan over to third. So it's now a 1 1 count to Millet. Switzer gets set and delivers. That is high. Two balls and one strike. It's awfully quiet here. I can hear my voice in the speaker. It's a little weird. <laughs> that ball misses down low. I feel like I'm sitting by myself watching a game and talking into a microphone. Yeah, the wind definitely helped with the... I mean, not really helped with the volume, but just kind of filled the, filled the void, I guess, yesterday. That's a big cut there from Millet to make it a full count. And the 3-2 pitch. And that is another big swing and a miss. So Millet will go down striking out for the second time. And that is the fifth strikeout for Switzer. Yeah, Switzer's just done a good job bouncing back after those first three batters. Now up is Donnie Bendo, the left fielder that hit a solo shot to lead off the second inning. Let's see if Switzer tries to get him to chase here. The righty looks ready, and the pitch is outside. Easy take there for Bendo. Looks like Robles is adjusting his defensive position, moving out to the grass. Pridey at seconds also out there. And that just misses the outside corner, so two balls and no strikes. Runner on third and two outs. And the 2-0 pitch misses high. So it looks like Switzer doesn't want to make any mistakes out over the plate. For Bendo. Yeah, and you can't blame him. You got two outs, two open bases. You don't need to give him to him here. And that misses way high for a four pitch walk. That'll bring up second baseman Marty Cole. He's got runners at the corners with two outs. Cole struck out in his first at bat. Next up for the C is the second baseman, number 11, Marty Cole. And the pitch from Switzer, and that is low and in the dirt. The huge lead over there at first is Bendo. Harkey looks him back. Harkey lays down the signs for Switzer, and he gets set. That is a big cut right there to even up the count. One ball and one strike. And the pitch is down low once again. Luhan at third with a conservative lead. But Bendo at first. Taking up some real estate out there as that pitch misses. 3-1 is the count. And that breaking ball misses high for back-to-back -back walks. Flynn Morris and the catchers over there in the on-deck circle. Taking off the pads. It's a quick little meeting at the mound. So bases loaded in two outs for the catcher who grounded out to third in his first at bat of the day. 
little pep talk there. For Switzer, everybody else breaks, heads back to their positions. It's an interesting look for Morrison. He's got one pant leg up at the knee and one down around his shin. Looks like how I wear my joggers most of the time when one pant leg starts to slip. And that breaking ball is in there. It's a nice curve. 55 pitches on the afternoon for Switzer so far. Usually in the third, you want to be right around 35. And that pitch misses outside to even up the count. And the 1-1 one, one pitch, is that is popped up high into foul territory. There's Medina underneath it, and he makes the play to end the inning. But not before the Seals can add two. They take a 3-0 lead going into the bottom of the third right after this. year as the athletic director of Solano College. To experience community college and its mission has been an outstanding experience. Solano College has a very rich tradition in intercollegiate athletics dating back to 1947. I'm very proud to uh, communicate that that rich tradition is still being continued with fine young men and women that represent Solano College on and off the court. In the fall we have the volleyball program, we have a very successful women's soccer program, we have both men's and women's basketball, and then we transition to four programs, baseball, of softball, men's women's tennis, and men's and women's swimming. It is our mission to excel our programs and our student athletes in academics, all of our student athletes are committed to give back to the community. And we would invite you to be a part of Solano College Athletics by visiting our website, www.solanoathletics.com, and you feel a warm welcome at Solano. Welcome back to Vanden High School as Eric Roles gets set to step in against uh, Will Moscato. Steven will be back in just a moment, but for now I am flying solo here. Moscato is, has 35 pitches so far on the afternoon. And welcome back Steven. Thank you. So here we are leading off the bottom of the third inning. Seals three, Mudcats zero. Got the number nine hitter, shortstop Eric Robles. I enjoy his walk-up music. Little Mac Dre. Robles is hitting 326. That first pitch misses. And that is in tight. So two balls and no strikes, two rolls. On deck we've got Wellington Balsley, followed up by Josh Medina. Robles currently plays for Sterling College. Before that he played for Butte College. And that is the third straight ball missing high and outside. And the 3-0 pitch, that also misses for a four-pitch walk to lead off the bottom half of the third here. Top of the order, Wellington Baldsley. Wellington grounded out to the shortstop to lead off the game for Solano. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's walking up to one of his own songs. It sounded like him. Yes, Wellington does have a CD out, and he drops down a bunt, and that is nice and bobbled by Wynn. Everybody is safe. The speedy Wellington making his way down that line in a hurry. 
So the Mudcats with something cooking here with a two on and nobody out. Stepping to the plate is Josh Medina. The right-hander steps in. And that pitch misses low. So Wellington takes a 15-foot lead <laughs> at first. Yeah, you don't usually have to worry about pickoffs when there's a runner on second. But you do have to worry about the back pick with the catcher. Yeah, the shortstop. Petrov and Cole paying a lot of attention to Robles over there at second, leaving some gaps on the left and right side of the infield. So that pitch misses low in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. Tina takes his time getting back in, and Moscato gets set and delivers. And that is on the inside corner. Two and one. And that pitch is low in the dirt, but... Yes. Taking third is Robles. And it looks like Wellington stays at first. That pitch was down in the dirt. Kind of rolled around. Morrison had a tough time grabbing it. Wouldn't be surprised to see Wellington try to steal second here. Yeah, that'd be no surprise at all as Moscato checks on him. And, and he goes. That's a strike. It's like and awkward. Wellington is there easily. So it's a full count now to Medina, but runners on second and third. Nobody out. Wellington had an amazing jump on that. I think he wanted to slide head first just to get his uniform a little dirty. And that is hit down the right field line, but curving foul. I think that one might have stayed fair yesterday, but not today. Yeah, that might have blown to center field yesterday. <laughs> Much more pleasant out here at Vanden High School, Fairfield, California, right off of Peabody Road. Close to Travis Air Force Base. See if we see some planes giving us a little flyover. And that is a big swing and a miss. Down to his knee is Medina. That's good for the third strikeout for Moscato. As it brings up right fielder James Harwell. So Harwell stepping in with one out, two runners on. He represents the go-ahead run here in the bottom of the third, tying run at second. Excuse me, the tying run at the plate. And that pitch just misses. So yes, the Seals have a 3-0 lead over the Cats. And the 1-0 pitch is in the dirt. 2-0. Looks like Robles with a good lead over there at third. We know Wellington's well off the bag at second. And the pitch. That is hit. Back behind the shortstop. Back is Petrov. But that is Bendo making the catch. Tagging is Robles. And he made it. So tagging up and scoring from third was Eric Robles. It is now three to one.
It looked like Balsley also moved over to third on the play. Yeah, the second one looked at that tag up and slide, and he gets in there. And Balsley does take third base on the play at home. So that's going to bring up Jack Pridey to DH. And that is hit into center field, making his way back as Campbell back and makes the catch to end the inning. But not before the Mudcats cut into the lead there just a little bit. We'll head into the top of the fourth. The Seals are up 3-1. to one. And joining me in the booth to start the top of the fourth will be Nate McKay. Right I'm uh, Diego Moyano. I'm a USTA lead national coach. We are here at Solano uh, College Courts uh, trying to win this uh, 100,000 that North Bay put together and uh, hopefully we can get the, the trophy. We have everything that an automotive shop would have or even a dealership would have. If you guys are interested in automotive at all, go to Solana Community College. Check out the automotive program. It can be a career path for you, just like what I'm doing, or it could be an extreme hobby as an enthusiast. If you really like cars and learning stuff all the time, then this is the best place to go. We'd like to say hello and welcome to Nate McKay joining me for the fourth, fifth, and sixth innings here today. Nate, welcome to the booth. Feels good to be back in the booth. How you doing, Steven? Fantastic. Yeah, you know, my biggest takeaway so far through as we're now in the top of the fourth inning here from Vannon High School, I think the Mudcats have to feel relieved that they're able to get at least one run in the bottom of the third, coming to the top of the fourth now, at least making it 3-1, because it almost looked like they were about to leave runners stranded on base once again. So they got to feel good making it at least a two-run game heading into the top of the fourth inning. Yeah, they started off with a leadoff walk and then a single, so two runners on and no out. And the Seals were able to get three outs in a row, only giving up one run on a sacrifice fly. Leading off for San Francisco will be the DH, Anthony McDougal. Struck out back in the second inning. I've seen Switzer have a bit of an up and down outing so far. Able to really locate some pitches and then a few mistakes here and there. Have given the Seals a 3-1 lead. And that is low and outside. Yeah, and for on the mound for the Swit for the Muckhats, Switzer is definitely going to look to have better outing here in the top half of the inning. And that is fouled off at the plate to even up the count. One ball and one strike. Play pretty straightaway defense out there. Banks over at first, playing a little bit deep. Harwell and Wright giving up the line. And the 1-1 one -one pitch. Big swing and a cut there for McDougal. Yeah, solid pitch right there from Switzer to get McDougal chasing and making it a 1-2 count here with no outs. And the 1-2 pitch from Switzer. And that is another big cut for a strikeout to lead off here in the fourth. The sixth strikeout for Switzer. Yeah, and back-to-back -back strikeouts for McDougal as well. We'll bring up Brandon Wynn. Singled back to lead off the third. And that pitch is hit, but right at the shortstop who bobbles it, throws, not able to get the out. So Robles had a little trouble with that one. Yeah, Robles sort of just slid and just couldn't quite regain his balance after getting the ball in his glove, which is very unfortunate now. 
getting a runner on with one out here in the top of the fourth for the Seals. So win will reach on that air. That'll bring up the top of the lineup, Zach Campbell. He's one for two with a single. So one on and one away. And the pitch from Switzer is in there. Look like Brandon over at first was getting a nice little lead. Switzer would like to check on him and does. And that is hit right back up the middle. Robles is there. Steps on second himself. Throws out a first not in time. They might have been able to turn that double play if he would have tossed it over to Pridey. But elected to take it himself and get the force out at second. Yeah, I agree. Definitely if he would have tossed it over there to Pridey, would have been an easy double play. Nonetheless, a good effort from Robles to attempt to get a double play. That'll bring up right fielder Rob Luhan. Rob doubled, got two RBIs, his last at bat, and there goes Campbell with an easy stolen base. Great jump there. And it's the 1 0 pitch from Switzer. And that is low and in the dirt. Looks like Campbell's getting a nice lead out there. Yeah, let's see if Switzer can find the strike zone right here. Let's make it a 2 1 count. As you now have a runner in scoring position for the Seals. Here comes our flyover. We've got a couple jets flying out beyond center field. And that pitch misses, 3-0. and oh. He's having a hard time here, Steven, trying to find that strike zone. i actually seen these planes flying over my house into Travis. Those are F-22s. I happen to be wearing my Raptors shirt. And that is down in the dirt. Campbell's going to take third. It's a good block by Harkey. I must have missed a strike there somewhere. It's three and one. It's probably paying too much attention to the airplanes. <laughs> it's all good. You can't resist once in a while. I see a jet go over your head. Three one pitch from Switzer. And that is low in the dirt for a walk. There's a walk. Especially I'm wearing I went to the air show here at Travis. Wearing my F-22 Raptors shirt that I picked up. So a fantastic demonstration. Really hot out that day. Got a nice sunburn. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing a button-up from, I think, Macy's. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Petrov steps in now, and the lefty hits that well into right field. Going back is Harwell, and it's over his head. He's unable to make a play on it. Coming in to score is Luhan. And heading over to third with a stand-up triple is Petrov. So 5-1 now here in the top of the fourth. San Francisco leads Solano. Yeah, talk about turning on the Jets for Petrov. Getting a two-RBI triple here in the top of the fourth inning. Yeah, that was a tough play out there. Harwell looked like he charged in, and that ball sailed over his head. That's going to bring up Jackson Millett, and that is fouled off at the plate. Yeah, it's tough when you're playing outfield. It's always good to take a step or two back because it's easier to charge in than it is to run backwards. Most definitely. And... That knee-high outside corner. So an 0-2 count now to the first baseman. Oh. Okay, I'm, I heard him say something after that second pitch. Yeah, he was checking over to first to see what was going to be the call. Now it's a 1-2. All right. Gave him that one right there as making it now an even count, 2-2. Two, two. Not used to hearing him call. 
That pitch misses, so that will make it a 3-2 count. Yeah, Switzer wants to get this guy out right now. The runner on third, and the 3-2 pitch. And that is fouled off at the plate. Looked like it might have got a piece of millet. You have one out or two outs? Two? Yeah. As we'll now see if Millet will try to avoid getting his third strikeout. And there is another walk. Oh, there it is, the second out. So that's two walks in the inning, and that is going to bring up Donnie Bendo, who's homered and walked. Grabs a little dirt for some grip. Let's take another look at his homer to left field. And that was crushed. Yeah, just a deep shot in the left field. To put the seals up, one nothing. Back in the second inning. That pitch misses the zone, so 1-0 and oh to Donnie. That is just a little outside, so two balls and no strikes. So runners at the corners and two out, and that is foul tip back into Harkey's glove. To make it a two on count. Yeah, good effort from Switzer to get Bendo chasing on that pitch. Now we got a 2-1 count working with runners at the corners with two outs. That's down in the dirt. Started to see Switzer miss a little bit on his pitches here in the fourth. He's trying to find that strike zone. And he does with that one a big cut from Bendo. That'll make it a full count. Switzer looks in, finds a pitch that he likes. It's going to be a big pitch here from Switzer. And that is hit, but sharply at Jason there at second. And he throws over to first two in the inning. So the Seals add a little bit to their lead. It is 5-2-1 5-2-1, going to the bottom of the fourth. Hi, Ginger Kane, dance faculty here at Solana Community College. I'm excited about our upcoming AA dance degree that has been developed just recently. We offer dance production, swing, ballroom, hip hop, jazz, modern, and ballet. We also are part of the ADT kinesiology degree, as well as the interdisciplinary studies degree, and for the general ed requirement for physical education. Please join up. It's a great way to meet new people, socialize, and make new friends. You do not have to be a dancer to sign up for a dance class. Hi, Christine Manny, full-time instructor at Solano College Theater. Have you ever been interested in coming into theater? Come over to Solano College and find out what it's all about. You can take classes, you can be involved in many different ways, and just come talk with us. Check us out at www.solano.edu slash theater. Banks, Harkey, Pfeiffer to lead it off here for the Mudcats in the bottom of the fourth inning. They're looking at a score of five to one down by four. The left-handed Banks steps in, struck out to lead off the second inning. And that pitch is knee-high outside corner. And Banks probably wants to get things started for the Mudcats right here. And that is way inside, right past the glove of Morrison. No 
doubt Banks wouldn't mind getting his fourth home run here to lead off the inning. And that is hit, but it's not going to be far enough. Right there is Campbell underneath it, and he makes the play. Banks just missing that one. Now up Christian Harkey, the Cats catcher. Seen him pitch last night as well. Doing a little bit of it all. He doubled back in the second. And that breaking ball is right back at Moscato off his glove. Making the play is Cole, and he gets him. So a good job of sticking with it there by the second baseman, Marty Cole. Yeah, and a good job from Miller for stretching out and almost pulling off a splits right there. That's going to bring up left fielder Nick Pfeiffer. And that breaking ball sails. Yeah, Pfeiffer in his last that bat flew out to left field. Was able to get a piece of it, but most likely wants to get on base here. That is a belt high strike to even up the count. One and one. A little bit more wind than when we started. And that is inside. Two and one. In yesterday's game, Nick Pfeiffer had one at bat. Only went 0 for 1 in that game. And that is hit. And right there is Petrov to make the catch and end the inning. So 1, 2, 3. They go down in order. When we come back, top of the fifth with Cole, Morrison, and McDougal. College just got affordable. Up to 100% of enrollment fees can be reimbursed for first-time college students taking full-time classes. At Solano Community College, we are taking full advantage of this to further your future. With certificate and degree programs in industrial technology, aeronautics, biotechnology, and many others, Solano Community College is a staple for success. For more information, please contact the Financial Aid Office at 707-864-7000. The idea of this space is to allow students to be creative. You get to design whatever you want, they help you get an idea, and then you can just go from there. From 3D printing, laser cutting, hydraulics, electronics. It's incredible what people have done. We had employers come in and tell us, we need these skills. The teachers are really helpful. Super supportive if you have no experience. I've had a fantastic time. I've learned a lot. Looks like the Cats have a new pitcher. It'll be Nick Dotson from Solano College. Dotson's got an ERA of 257. We've seen Dotson also pitch a couple times during our broadcast at Solano Community College. He does. He's got a save for the Mudcats. Very solid hitter and a very good pitcher at times we've seen during our broadcast. Yeah, not this past season. Season before, we saw Dotson play a lot of third base. This past season, he was at second. Seen him improve leaps and bounds over his freshman year at Solano. Was great on defense and a, a solid hitter for the Falcons last year. He's going to face second baseman Marty Cole. Marty is 0 for 1 and walked in his last at bat. 5 to 1 seals over the Mudcats as the righty reliever. Gets set to make his first pitch. Cool. 
And that first pitch misses a little outside. As Dotson gets set. And that is in there one and one. Dotson towing the edge of the rubber. The Knights high set with his glove. Big step back. And that breaking ball misses. Two balls and one strike. Haven't seen Cole take a crack at the bat yet. That is outside, so three and one. And really for Cole at this at-bat, he's really been eyeing it so far. And that is hit high, out of bounds. Heads up. Oh, and out of play just behind us. Everybody kind of chatting and talking. This is going to make it a full count, three and two. Some innocent bystanders back there, and that is hit, but right there is Robles, catches it on a hop, and so does Banks to get the out. A yeah, nice throw from Robles to give over to first just in time for the first out of the top of the fifth inning. That'll bring up the catcher, Flynn Morrison. The righty steps in, and that pitch misses inside. And Morrison on the day is already 0-2. And that misses just low. Two balls and no strikes. Morrison still sporting the one high, one mid pant leg. Not mad at it. And that is high and tight. Yeah, Dotson now sort of shine away from the strike zone. Looking to find out this next pitch right here. And there it is, belt high, inside half of the plate. To make it a 3-1 count. one pitch and that is hit foul down the third baseline. I'll make it a 3-2 count now as Morrison steps back in. The pitch from Dotson. And that breaking ball drops in front of the plate. So an easy take there for Morrison for the walk. It's going to bring up Anthony McDougal. Struck out twice. Went down swinging both times. That it is definitely quiet out here. <laughs> feel like I'm sitting by myself. Along with you, Nate, of course. Of course, most definitely. And McDougal on the day is 0-2 with two strikeouts so far. And that first pitch misses just low. So one on and one out. Dotson pitching out of the stretch. Checks the runner. And the pitch, that breaking ball misses just low. Looked like McDougal wanted the, to go for it, but held up. And yeah, the last three pitches from Dotson, unable to find the strike zone. Now he's now got a 2-0 count. That is fouled down the right field line, curving out of play. No help in the wind on that one. Yeah, Harwell's playing pretty far off the line there, so that could probably score Morrison from first if McDougal is able to poke it out there down the line. Yeah, if he got a good jump, easily would have been 6-1 game already. And there it is, knee-high pitch to even up the count. Two balls and two strikes. 
for a ball nine, Giovanni Grossi. And the 2-2 two -two pitch from Dotson. That breaking ball gets him swinging and flinging it over to first to see if they could double up with Harkey. But getting back easily was Morrison. So that is good for Dotson's first strikeout. And a good eye from Harkey to attempt to get a double play. That's going to bring up third baseman Brandon Wynn. He's reached base safely twice, once with a single and once with an error. And that was a good cut, but no contact. So 0 and 1. Morrison is taking a conservative lead over at first. Good way to start off this at bat for Dotson. And that breaking ball is in there. So a quick 0-2 count now to the third baseman. Looks like Dotson might feel a little bit more comfortable out of the stretch. Yeah, he's starting to be more consistent. And that pitch is high. One and two. <laughs> Looks like right fielder James Harwell is out there working on his swing. or something <laughs> and that hits win so a walk and now a hit batsman will put two on and two out for the top of the order Zach Campbell yeah just very unfortunate for Dawson you know those first two pitches looked really good you know now just get a man on with a hit by a pitch is the last thing I'm pretty sure the Mudcats would have wanted that looked like that curveball might have just gotten away from him so Campbell's two for three with a stolen base. And that is hit high into center field, running over his Balsley butt. There's Harwell to make the catch. Maybe he was practicing his defense out there a moment ago, but that's going to... Do it for us here in the top half of the six. Seals still lead five to one over the Mudcats. Excited to be here for Welcome Week. Solano Community College welcomes all of our students back. We want students to feel welcome, to be part of a vibrant community, and understand that we go out of our way to make sure that you feel that there's a place here for you and a range of services to support you through your academic study. Hi, my name is Vanessa, treasurer of the ASSC here at Solano Community College. And today we're just here handing out scantron pencils, coffee, free hot chocolate, and all this stuff just to get our students um, to feel comfortable on the campus. I'm staffing the Ask Me table this week where we are answering students' questions and promoting the Solano College Promise, which makes your first year free if you attend full time. Hi, my name is McKaylee Mates. I'm the president of the Drama Club here on Solano's campus. We're here informing kids about what we're about and um, we're here at Welcome Back Week, kind of introducing the new students into what we do here on campus. Um, we're here with a lot of different clubs. If you can make it down, come see us. Welcome back to the bottom of the sixth inning. Excuse me, bottom of the fifth inning. Uh, due up for Solano will be Pratty, Robles, then Balsley. So you are listening to the Solano College Sports Network. We are also on Fairfield Public Access Channel 28. You can find us on Facebook, Solano College Sports Network, YouTube under our professor Greg Poff, Twitter, SCSN Sports, and also on Instagram at C SCSN Sports as well. Thank you for tuning in here. All of our Broadcasted games can be found on Greg Poff's YouTube channel, as well as our in-studio content where we have sports shows, on-campus interviews, all kinds of fun stuff that the students get to do over at Solano College. So here we have second baseman Jason Pridey flight out to center in his first at-bat to end the second inning. 
and that pitch misses. And that one misses as well. So 2-0 and now to Jason. A good eye so far through these two pitches from Pratty. He's trying to find the right pitch. And that's not it. This Pridey has an interesting batting stance. He's high up on that front leg, taps it for timing, and the 3-0 pitch, and that is hit high in foul territory. But right there is Millet, and he makes the catch. Looks like the wind might have blown that one back in towards the field of play. Yeah, I could have sworn that was going out of play. So that's going to bring up Eric Robles. I'm enjoying the shortstop's walk-up music quite a bit. So Robles walked in his first at-bat to lead off the third inning. That pitch misses low and inside. The 1-0 pitch, and that is hit. Towards the second baseman, Cole catches it and makes the throw over to first. That's good for the second out here in the bottom of the fifth. That's going to bring up the top of the order, Wellington Balsley. I got to say I'm enjoying his walk-up music as well as it is his own. That is hit high in foul territory down the left field line. They're charging over. I can't see it, and it's out of play. So an 0-1 count now to Wellington. One for two on the day. And that is hit towards the first baseman. M and looks like covering was, I can't see anything over there. <laughs> so Moscato covering, they're able to make the out regardless. And that'll end the fifth inning. We'll be back here with the top of the sixth right after this. I'm Rusty Mays. I'm one of the instructors here at the Solano Community College Aeronautics Program here at the Nut Tree Airport. Here at Solano Community College, we really see them thrive and learn. We have a 100% pass rate with our examiner. I'm Kevin Spolstra, instructor, Solano Community College Aeronautics. At Solano Community College Aeronautics Program, we teach the students aviation maintenance. We teach them the general subjects, the airframe subjects, and the power plant subjects. The students will also be prepared to pass their multiple tests from the FAA. At Solano Community College, we also have a partnership with Delta Airlines. Through Delta Tech Ops, students that complete the program, they will be considered for employment as an aviation maintenance technician. And Nick Dodson still out there on the bump for the Cats. Leading off will be Rob Luhan, right fielder. He is one for two on the day with a double, a strikeout, and a walk. He'll be followed up by Nate Petrov, then Jackson Millett, who made the out to end the bottom of the fifth inning, tossing it over to Moscato. I apologize where we're seated. I have a hard time seeing the lines, the left and the right field line. Here comes the right-handed hitter, Luhan. And Luhan on the day is already one and two. Had that two RBI double. Dotson looks in from the windup and the pitch is a fastball for a called first strike. Uh, 
and that is also there knee high for an 0-2 count. Yeah, already a quick first two pitches find the strike zone for Dotson. And that breaking ball is fouled. No, not fouled in fair territory. Going back is Pridey and makes the catch. Good job from Pridey to get under that with a wind carrying the ball. Delivering the first out of the top of the sixth inning. That's going to bring up a shortstop Petrov. Petrov's two for three with a triple. And that first pitch misses outside. Yeah, Petrov was really on his horse for that triple. And that is hit right back up the middle, but there, able to make the play is Robles, and he throws over to first for the second out. Robles showing off his arm there. Now up Jackson Millett, first baseman. 0 for 2, two strikeouts and a walk for San Francisco. Seals lead 5-1 to one here in the top of the sixth inning. Two outs. And that breaking pitch is in there. Sun has ducked back behind some clouds here. And that nicks Millet. Looked like maybe on the hand. Either way, he will reach base. That's going to bring up Donnie Bendo. Yeah, second player that Dotson has hit so far today. Donnie Bendo up. He hit a home run, a solo shot. He's also walked and grounded out to second. It's a big gap over there on the right side of the infield. And that is hit foul back out of play towards the Seals dugout. As that hit right at the tree, hitting back at the top of the dugout for the Seals. Millet with a decent lead over there at first. Dotson checks on him and delivers a breaking ball that's in there for a called strike two. I definitely think Dotson pitches better out of the stretch. He's looking good so far. And that breaking ball is popped up, but making his way over there is Banks in foul territory, and he catches it to end the inning. So one stranded for the Seals. That'll do it for the top of the sixth. We'll be right back with the bottom half of the inning right after this. When I'm not here, I'm here. And when I'm not here, I'm here! Leading off here, the bottom half of the sixth inning, we've got Josh Medina, the third baseman, followed up by James Harwell and Jack Pridey, the DH. Got a new pitcher for the Seals. Not sure. Oh, there we go. It's Peyton Baker, right-hander out of Alabama A&M. Looking like a darker-haired... Noah Syndergaard. Or even a Derek Rodriguez. Does look a little Derek Rodriguez-ish. 
Looks like the righty's got a good breaking ball. Let's see if he can pitch better than Derek Rodriguez. I know, that's harsh. <laughs> Derek Rodriguez was a stud last year. He's doing his struggles this year, year though. Isn't he injured? You know, I haven't checked re recently. I remember him having a high ERA through first couple of games for the Giants this season, I, last time I checked. But he had a stellar season, I agree, with the last season for the Giants. And that first pitch is in there for a called strike to Josh Medina. Josh is 0 for 2. And that breaking ball misses. Even up to count one ball and one strike. And the 1-1 one -one pitch. And that is a big cut to even it up, two and two. Medina steps back in, the two-two count, and the pitch from Peyton. And that breaking ball is off the outside corner. Three balls and two strikes. Medina working with a full count now with no outs here in the bottom of six. And he works himself into a walk to lead off the inning here. A yeah, good eye for Medina to get himself on base. Looks like my call into those F-22s got through. I asked for flybys in between hitters or innings so I don't get distracted. Looks like it worked. So that's going to bring up James Harwell, one for two with a single. And that misses a little low, a little outside. Yes. Yeah, in the left outside corner on that pitch from, from Baker. And that is hit down the right field line, but foul. One and one is the count as Medina makes his way back to first base. Yeah, Medina had a good jump. If Harwell was able to keep that in play, could have easily been heading over the third now. Peyton in the stretch and delivers a strike. Yeah, caught Harwell looking on that pitch. Right in the strike zone. Medina with a, a decent lead over there at first. And that breaking ball is hit softly into shallow center field. It's going to drop right in front of Campbell. So Harwell reaches safely with a single. Medina makes his way over to second base. There's no outs for the DH. Jack Pridey. Jack's 0 for 2. Looking to change that here in this at bat here in the bottom of the six. The Seals lead five to one over the Slano Mudcats. Yeah, Pride was able to go one of one for three in yesterday's game. Was able to get a hit at least. And he wanted to send it out with that hack, but that'll be fouled straight back and out of play. Jack's hitting 388 coming into today with one home run. And that pitch misses outside. One ball and one strike. And he has himself in a good situation here with two runners on, one in scoring position with no outs here with a 1-1 one -one count. Wind starting to pick up just a little bit. And that hits the outside corner. One and two. Yeah, we have seen this win be an advantage and a disadvantage for both teams so far. Yeah. 
And that is hit down the right field line, but just foul by about a foot. Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five people between me and where that ball landed. This is a fantastic vantage point for the lines. Well, you take what you can get. <laughs> Absolutely. So a reset here. One and two is the count to Pridey. Looking to see if he could bend that one back about 18 inches into fair territory. Pitch from Peyton, and that breaking ball is hit in the gap on the left side of the infield. Coming around to score is Medina, and he's going to reach safely. So Pridey with an RBI single there to make it 5-2. to two. Harwell advances to second. And that was a hit Pridey was looking forward to get a run on. Making this a three-run game now, making it 5-2. to two. It's going to bring up Justin Banks. It's 0 for 2. Two runners on and no outs here in the bottom of the sixth. That misses a little low, a little inside. The Dirty Fish looking to do some damage here. Keep the line moving. Pitch from Peyton, and that is hit but foul down the first baseline. That was just barely foul as well. Priority jogging back to first. Harwell going back to second. It's an even count, one and one. The big lefty steps back in. Baker checks the runners and delivers, and that is a high chopper right up the middle, but coming over is Petrov, flips it over to second and doesn't get it. So it doesn't get the force out there at second. It's a tough play with Petrov moving up the middle and then coming over to the right side of second base. So that's going to be bases loaded for Christian Harkey. Christian hit a double and grounded out to second. They're having a little mound meeting over there. Looks like Millet talking things over and the skipper for the Seals is coming out to have a little discussion with the umpire. Fortunately, no calls into New York here at Vanden High School. Don't right. think we're at that level yet. The skipper pleads his case. And the umpire has had enough, walks back into his position. So Christian Harkey... The right-hander set to step into the box here as Baker gets set. Bases loaded, still nobody out. And the pitch from Baker. And he checks the runner over at third, and he gets him. What a pickoff move. What a pickoff move there by the righty to get that runner, Harwell. Yeah, just a strong throw from Orson to get the runner out of third. Yeah, Baker with a great pickoff move there. And that pitch is in there. One and one now to Harkey. So now we've got runners on first and second with one away. And that breaking ball misses high. Two balls and one strike. And that misses inside. So three and one now to the catcher.
Lots of room down there on the right field line. And that is hit high, foul, and out of play. Christian Harkey, a.k.a. Squints, as his teammates and coaches call him. And that gets past the catcher, but it's a walk. So here we are once again with bases loaded. This time with one out. And that's going to bring up Nick Pfeiffer. A little Richie Rich, something about the West Coast remix walk-up music. Music facts for you, 1996. And Pfeiffer's looking for a hit as well. He's 0-2 so far in this game. Well, that ball is low. And that is hit into right field. And it's going to drop right in front of Luhan, and that'll score a run. Everybody else moves up a base, and Pfeiffer reaches safely with an RBI single. Five to three now. Solano's got something cooking here in the bottom of the sixth. Bases loaded once again with one out for second baseman Jason Pridey. 0 for 2 today. So the lefty steps in the box. Pitch from Baker, and that is low. So the 1-0 pitch, and that is hit high in foul territory, but going back is Morrison back, 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 and it just sails out of play. Almost hitting some of the good patrons here, taking in a beautiful baseball game this evening at Vanden High School. They can almost hit the outhouse as well. The outhouse on a one hopper. Top half, baby, top half. So 1-1 one, one count now to Pridey. And that is hit in the gap on the right side of the infield. That's going to score one. Coming around, and that's going to score two. Sliding in under the tag is Harkey. So that's two RBIs for Pridey. And just like that, it is five to five. So it's five to five, and that's going to bring up the number nine hitter. Eric Robles. We have a little powwow on the mound. That might be it for Peyton Baker. Let's see if they keep him in. Runners on first and second with one out. I have a. I can't see the scoreboard from where we're sitting. Sometimes I gotta take a look at our screen. Sometimes I got to guess. So finally, the home plate ump goes out there to throw a grenade in the middle of this powwow. Five minutes later, Eric Robles, the left-handed shortstop. Conveniently, now the catcher is having... Equipment issues. <laughs> is it stuck to his chest protector? I and think it, it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> there might be buying time for someone that's getting warmed up over there in their bullpen. Yeah, I don't know how you get that caught out to your <laughs> protector, but... For Flynn Morrison, I guess it happens. If there were mound visits, this would count as four. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to feel for Morrison, though. 
Come on, Morrison. Nah, it's... Hey, it happens. PA here having a little fun. A little Pink Panther music. On deck is the top of the order, Wellington Ballsley. So I just confirmed with Wellington Balsley. Welly do that. Do that is his rap name. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a little break here while they buy more time for their relief pitcher. We'll be back right after this. We have everything that an automotive shop would have or even a dealership would have. If you guys are interested in automotive at all, go to Solana Community College. Check out the automotive program. It can be a career path for you, just like what I'm doing, or it could be an extreme hobby as an enthusiast. If you really like cars and learning stuff all the time, then this is the best place to go. And we're back with the sixth inning stretch. Our PA announcer is having a little fun playing a little Budweiser commercial. If you remember, weather. Chilling. What you doing, Nate? Not much. Just watching Flynn Morrison still having problems with his hel helmet still on the chest protector. We might as well welcome you to the broadcast here on Solano College Sports Network. We're at Vanden High School in what is now an overcast Fairfield, California, where the Solano Mudcats are playing host to the San Francisco Seals. Bottom of the sixth inning, one out, runners on first and second. The game is all tied up. And they finally got that. And off. there it is. Big smiles all around. As Flynn Morrison was, I would clap, but thankfully I cannot. In what you call a sticky situation, there he gets out of it. As we're set to resume play, it is Eric Robles stepping into the box, 0 for 1 with a walk. So Peyton. Baker still on the mound is getting set for the first pitch to Robles. And there it is. And that is on the outside corner for a called strike. There is somebody warming up over there in the Seals bullpen. And that is hit to the right side of the infield. And it's, oh, caught by the second baseman Cole, but he's unable to, over there at first base, that's Millet unable to hold on to it. That was a great job there by Cole. They were just unable to finish the play. So bases loaded. Bases loaded for Wellington Balsley, stepping in the left-hander. One out, bases loaded again here in the bottom of the sixth. And that is off the outside corner. Wellington is leading the team coming in today with a 442 batting average. And if anyone can deliver in these kind of situations, it's definitely Wellington. And that is hit high down the left field line and into foul territory. And unable to get it is Donnie Bendo. So it's a 1 1 count now to Balls Lee. Balsley's one for three. His one hit was actually a bunt single. Wellington's got wheels, so he was able to beat out the throw. And the 1-1 one -one pitch, and that 
Off-speed pitch is dribbled down the first baseline. They go to home for the force out. So it's a good heads-up play there by Jackson Millett to get the lead runner and save a run. Now up, Josh Medina. Dean is 0 for 2 with a walk. He walked to lead off this inning here. And was the first one to score here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And that is hit high in the air, foul territory, and it drops right between Morrison and Baker. Surprised the catcher's helmet didn't get caught in his chest protector again. A little, maybe it's some miscommunication there between Millet, Baker, and Morrison. It's that ball kind of dropped right between all three. Nonetheless, we're going to Medina's going to step back in the box with an 0-1 count. Base is still loaded with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. And that is off the outside part of the plate. So one ball and one strike to the third baseman. A yeah, good eye from Medina. Evening the count now at 1-1 one, one with two outs here. As Baker gets set and delivers the 1-1 one, one pitch. That is outside. Yeah, Josh is looking for the right pitch at this at-bat. Making it a 2-1 count now. We've got some speed out there on the base pads, so oh, yeah, if anything ball. hit out, it could be trouble for the Seals, but no, there's Campbell making the catch to end the inning before any more damage could be done. But it is now a tied-up game, 5-5, five to five, coming up in the top half of the eighth. Nathan Farmer will be joining me back in the booth. And for the Seals, it's Cole, Morrison, and McDougal. Nate Freeman now on the bump for the Mudcats, a right-handed reliever. Yeah, Freeman is a solid two-way player. He had a very good senior year out at Benicia where he hit 443 and had a 141 ERA. For the Mudcats, he's got an 0 for 01 record. But he's pitching a 417 ERA. We're all tied up as we go into the top of the eighth inning. Knotted up five to five. It's the third pitcher for the Mudcats. <laughs> Welcome back to the booth, Nathan. Thank you. So we got Harwell leading off. No, excuse me, <laughs> wrong side of my scorebook. We got Cole leading off for San Francisco. Goes 0 for 2 on the day with a walk. Left-handed ste second baseman steps in, facing the right-handed Freeman. And that is in side corner for a called strike. A little bit of pop to that pitch there. So we heard Harkey's glove snap. And just off the outside corner to even it up. 
Freeman working the opposite side of the of the rubber as Nick Dotson was. So if you're a batter, it's the far left side. That pitch is low in the dirt, so it's two balls and one strike. And that is a big cut from Cole to even up the count two and two. And the pitch is low and inside. Hey, you don't usually see a right-handed pitcher work from the far left side of the rubber when you're looking out at the mound. It's an interesting kind of a cross pitch to a left-handed hitter, and that is hit high, foul, and out of play. So the count remains three and two. Yeah, when the righty's you know, lined up over there, it's... It's a little tougher for a lefty to pick up the ball. And that's a big cut and a strikeout. So now up is the catcher, Flynn Morrison. Flynn's 0 for 2 with a walk. And that is... Off-speed pitches in there, belt high, strike one. Flynn's been having wardrobe malfunctions left and right today. And he's finally fixed his uh, pant leg, and then he had the mask stuck to the chest protector last inning. That was a nasty curveball to make it an 0-2 count to Morrison. And uh, way out in front of that breaking ball for the second strikeout in a row. Nate Freeman is dealing here in the top of the eighth. So now up the designated hitter. That'll be Shane Jones. Replacing Anthony McDougal as the DH. And that pitch just misses the zone. So the 1 0 pitch is belt high strike. So 1 and 1 to the DH. Pitch from Freeman is right in the same place for called strike two. And that breaking ball is in the dirt, trying to see if he could get Jones chasing. He does not. That'll even up the count, two and two. Got Edgar Key Cruz over here by the booth. Edgar threw a gem yesterday. And that oh, is hit man. right over the head of Robles at short. <laughs> what a bad hop. So Jones will reach first base. So Edgar threw seven scoreless yesterday. Six scoreless. Eight strikeouts. Two walks. He's shaking his head. That's what it was. <laughs> but unfortunately, the Mudcats unable to come away with a win yesterday. Now up is third baseman Brandon Wynn. So there's two outs, a runner on first for the third baseman. And that pitch also misses the zone, so... 2 0. Shane Jones with a modest lead at first. And that pitch misses the inside corner, so a 3 0 count here. They yeah, definitely don't want to walk the nine hole hitter. Getting back to the top of the lineup. There's a belt high strike. The 
a 3-1 pitch from Freeman. And that breaking ball is in there. That's a great pitch. To make it a full count to Brandon Wynn. His last that bat, he was hit by the pitch. Oh, and that foul ball is back off the home plate umpire's mask. That was a tough shot there. Hope he's all right. Shane Jones was running on the play in case contact was made. Looked like it was right off the mouth. See if we can get a bottle of water. So a little recap here. <laughs> Seals and Mudcats all tied up at five. We give a few minutes to the umpire to collect things after that shot taken off the mask. The Seals took a five run lead into the six. Or the Mudcats scored five to tie it up. Been saying it's the top of the eighth. This is the top of the seventh. I'll I'll get this down one of these days. Maybe I just want the <laughs> the game to go by a little faster. Looks like he'll be all right. Thankfully. Harky checks on him, making sure he is good to go. As Wynn steps back in the box, the full count, Freeman back on the rubber. Looks like Jones now has a better lead over there at first. Banks isn't holding him on. Yeah, with full count and two outs, he's, def he's obviously going to be running on the pitch. And that is hit softly. Right there is Robles throwing over to first and unable to get the hop is Banks. That throw was down in the dirt. Shane Jones makes his way over to third on the pass ball. Banks runs it in. So Wynn will reach with an error. That's the second error to the shortstop that Wynn will reach on today. It's going to bring up the top of the order. Zach Campbell with runners on the corners and two outs. You know, I almost wonder, I mean, I've never personally never played shortstop at, at this high of a level, but it might have been an easier play to go barehanded because that ball wasn't going very fast. Yeah, and Jones had a good jump on contact, and it was hit pretty soft, so I don't know if he would have been able to flick it over to second, but it would have been maybe a little quicker to barehand it so he didn't have the, the glove-to-hand exchange as Campbell looks at a first-pitch strike. Harkey is up. Looking win back to first. So it's a 1 1 count now to center fielder Zach Campbell. And a big swing and a miss there to make it a 1 2 count. Freeman started off the inning with. Two strikeouts. And there it is, looking to close it out in the same way with his third strikeout of the inning. We're still all tied up, heading into the, the bottom of the seventh. Due up four of the Mudcats will be Harwell, Pridey, and Banks. Hi, my name is Eric Visser. I'm in my fifth year as the athletic director of Solano College. To experience community college and its mission has been an outstanding experience. Solano College has a very rich tradition in intercollegiate athletics dating back to 1947. I'm very proud to uh, communicate that that rich tradition 
It's still being continued with fine young men and women that represent Solano College on and off the court. In the fall, we have the volleyball program. We have a very successful women's soccer program. We have both men's and women's basketball. And then we transition to four programs, baseball, of softball, men's women's tennis, and men's and women's swimming. It is our mission to excel our programs and our student athletes in academics. All of our student athletes are committed to give back to the community. And we would invite you to be a part of Solano College Athletics by visiting our website www.solanoathletics.com and you feel a warm welcome at Solano. And we're back here to start the bottom half of the seventh inning. James Harwell to lead it off. The right fielder for the Mudcats. It's interesting as we listen to the uh, uh, take me out to the ball game here. I was watching the uh, Cubs game today and they had uh, Cookie Monster from Sesame Street singing, the <laughs> singing take me out to the ball game. That's pretty good. And our uh, producer Brian wants me to do a Cookie Monster impression but I am not going down that road. <laughs> I think all I've ever heard Cookie Monster say was, I love cookies. Five to five here in the bottom of the seventh as Harwell steps in. And that is off the catcher's mask. Flynn Morrison tipped the glove <laughs> and the flip out to the pitchers right over Baker's head. It's a dangerous job catching in calling balls and strikes behind the plate. So an 0-1 count. And that misses high and outside. Even it up. Got the designated hitter, Jack Pridey on deck, followed up by Justin Banks, the first baseman. And that is on the inside corner. One and two is the count. And the pitch from Baker as a breaking ball in there. Oh, I guess the first pitch was called a ball. Now it's one and two. Two, two. Two, two count. Thank you. And now it's a three, two count. Harwell got picked off of third back in the sixth. Big sixth inning by Solano. And that is hit into left field. Making his way over is Bendo, and he makes the catch. Jack Pridey up now for the Mudcats. So one out here, and that pitch sails high. Pratty's one for three, an RBI single in that big sixth inning. And that pitch misses low. So two balls and no strikes. And we're at 3-0 and now to the designated hitter. And the pitch from Peyton is in there. Pridey taking all the way in a 3-0 count. Baker makes the pitch. Now it's 3-1. and one. And that is hit foul down the left field line. So from 3-0 to a 3-2. And, <laughs> Baker gets set and delivers. And that is inside for a walk.
That'll bring up Justin Banks. Justin's one for three. Struck out, flew out to center field, and singled. Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner here. We are. That's the speedy Jason Verrett coming in. Isaiah Verrett. Uh, Isaiah. <laughs> I don't think Jason Verrett, <laughs> I don't think the 49ers would be happy with him playing baseball. <laughs> Jason's younger brother, Isaiah Verrett. I have seen Verrett score from first on things that are hit into the outfield, and he's back as Baker throws over to check on him. Barrett playing the last two seasons for the Solano Falcons. As Baker checks on Barrett again and throws, and that is popped up high right back over here and... Right by the concessions table. We're under a canvas tent here. So not a scary, scary moment, but kind of a scary moment. Duck and cover. We've got our camera guys right next to us. We're more worried about them. Are we? I am. I don't <laughs> know about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that squirts away from... Millet over there. Our camera folks here to my left, our professor Greg Poff, and our fellow student Jasmine. We do worry about their safety. And that pitch misses low. Even up the count, one and one to the first baseman, Justin Banks. Isaiah Verrett over there at first. The good initial lead and a better secondary lead. And that is hit well into center field. Going back is Campbell. Back, back, and off the wall. Coming around to score is Verrett. Into second base with a stand-up double is Banks. That breaks up the tie here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Cats now lead the Seals 6-5. to five. I was starting to worry I jinxed him because I was <laughs> – Hyping up Justin Banks because I know he's had a, such a great year here with the Mudcats and with Coppin State, but he definitely came through there with the clutch RBI double. That's the ninth double for Banks on the season for Solano, and that was close to being his fourth home run. Now up Christian Harkey, the catcher. Doubled back in the second inning. That first pitch misses outside. Verrett scoring easily from first. On that double from Banks. And the 1-0 pitch is down low. Let's make it 2-0. Banks is not a very fast runner, so it would probably take an extra base hit to score him here from second. A runner on second and one out. And that is hit high down the right field line, curving into foul territory, and nobody gets there in time. So a long strike to make it a two balls in one strike count. Banks makes his way back to second base. And Harkey cleans up the box a little bit before stepping in. Baker working on the left side of the rubber. And that breaking ball is high. So three balls and one strike to the catcher. Gone very quiet once again here at Vanden High. And a big cut. The count is now full. Here a pencil drop. Good lead now at second by Banks. Baker checks on him and delivers the 
3-2 pitch. And that's fouled straight back. So we'll do it again. Baker looks in, shakes off a couple signs, and finds one he likes. And that breaking ball is good for a strikeout. It's going to bring up left fielder Nick Pfeiffer. Yeah, Baker was just toying with Harkey there. He was late on the fastball in the 3-1 count, and then he was early on the curveball there in the full count. Pfeiffer's one for three with an RBI single. And that is low. So there's two outs, runner on second. Mudcats looking to add some insurance runs here after breaking the tie. And that is hit high and out of play. One ball and one strike to Pfeiffer. Baker gets set and delivers a breaking ball that Pfeiffer just got a piece of that to foul it off. So Pfeiffer digs in. As Baker gets set and delivers the one-two pitch. And that is hit to the right side of the infield. Right there is Millet. Catches it and takes it himself over to first to end the inning. But the Mudcats add one to the board to break the tie. They're up 6-5. And now we're ready to go to the top of the eighth right after this. I'm uh, Diego Moyano. I'm a USDA lead national coach. We are here at Solano uh, College Courts uh, trying to win this uh, 100,000 that North Bay put together and uh, hopefully we can get the, the trophy. We have everything that an automotive shop would have or even a dealership would have. If you guys are interested in automotive at all, go to Solana Community College. Check out the automotive program. It can be a career path for you, just like what I'm doing, or it could be an extreme hobby as an enthusiast. If you really like cars and learning stuff all the time, then this is the best place to go. And we're back here for the top of the eighth inning. Looking to see who's coming in on defense. So we had Isaiah Verrett pinch run back in the bottom of the seventh. It looks like we have a new pitcher, Diego Ramirez, from Occidental College. He had a 2.33 ERA. Over 73 and a third innings pitch for Occidental. That's good for a 2-1 record by the right-handed reliever. <laughs> so leading off here in the top of the inning is Rob Luhan. He is one for three with a walk. Flight out to second base, his last at bat. So we'll get to take our first look at Ramirez. And that was a great cutter right there for a called strike.
And that breaking ball gets a piece of Luhan, so he'll make his way over. That's the third batter that's been hit by Solano today. So that's going to bring up Nate Petrov. A shortstop for the Seals. And that is a chopper on the right hand side of the infield. Spinning around was Pridey. And he throws that into left field. So all the runners are going to move up. Yeah, that was going to be a very tough play. Definitely want to try and get the sure out there at first. But Pridey was trying to make a miracle play there and turn the double play. Yeah, at I least think, get the lead, learner, I lead think, runner. I think it was the spin that threw him off. So it looked like he had time to get the force. That's going to bring up Jackson Millett, first baseman for San Francisco, as Harkey trots out to have a chat with Ramirez. Now for Solano, this is definitely not the start to the inning you want after taking the lead in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, there's no outs and two on. And that's a big swing and a miss from Millet. Ramirez looks and gets the signs. And the 0 pitch is in tight. Millet has been hit by a pitch today. He's also walked and struck out twice. And the 1-1 pitch is a chopper right there oh, at the shortstop. Robles. Looks like that's going to be. And he is out. Or the runner is out at third. It's runner interference as he hit Robles' arm. Looks like the runner has to go back to third as well. He does. So that is a very lucky break for Solano. It is. So that's Luhan has to go back to third. Petrov is out on the interference call, and Millet will reach first. Because it sure looked like Robles, he, he was squaring up to come home on that ball. He, he definitely would have had a play at the plate. Lucky break one way and a tough break the other. That's going to bring up number three, Donnie Bendo, who hasn't done a whole lot since his home run back in the second. One for three here today with a walk. And that pitch misses low again, so 2-0 and now to the left fielder, Bendo. It's got runners on the corners, one out here in the top of the eighth. Mudcat six, the Seals five. And that is hit deep into center field. Charging back is Balsley, and he makes the catch. But tagging up at third is Luhan and he will score easily. That's going to tie it up 6-6 six to six with that sacrifice fly by Bendo. It's going to bring up Marty Cole. Marty struck out a few times, walked 0 for 3. Runner on first and two out. And that is belt high outside corner. It's a good pitch from Ramirez. Now, all things considered, when you have runners at second and third, nobody out, and just giving up the one run, that's definitely a win for Solano. And that breaking ball is in there. No balls and two strikes to the second baseman. It's like Millet's got a good lead over there at first, and that is a pitch out. Harkey wanted to throw it down, but Millet able to get back. So one and two is the count. Oh. 
And there goes Millet and a swing and a miss for the strikeout as he actually fouled that back into Harkey's glove to end the inning. But not before the Seals can come back and tie it up at six. When we come back, it's the bottom of the eighth. Hi, Ginger Kane, dance faculty here at Solana Community College. I'm excited about our upcoming AA dance degree that has been developed just recently. We offer dance production, swing, ballroom, hip hop, jazz, modern, and ballet. We also are part of the ADT kinesiology degree, as well as the interdisciplinary studies degree, and for the general ed requirement for physical education. Please join up. It's a great way to meet new people, socialize, and make new friends. You do not have to be a dancer to sign up for a dance class. Hi, Christine Manny, full-time instructor at Solano College Theater. Have you ever been interested in coming into theater? Come over to Solano College and find out what it's all about. You can take classes, you can be involved in many different ways, and just come talk with us. Check us out at www.solano.edu slash theater. Welcome back to Vanden High School in Fairfield, California. The San Francisco Seals 6 and the Solano Mudcats 6. All tied up as we head into the bottom of the 8th. Peyton Baker still on the mound for the Seals. Leading off the inning for the Mudcats is Jason Pridey, the second baseman. His throwing air helped lead to the Seals' run in the top half of the inning to tie it up. Pridey will be followed by Robles and then Balsley to top the order. Yeah, I'm sure he wants to redeem himself here. Set up a rally here for the Mudcats. It's one for three today. With two RBIs, that pitch misses. And that one is in there, even it up, one and one. And the pitch from Baker, and that misses high. Two balls and one strike. one pitch and that is a big swing and a miss two and two that looked like he was just out in front on that one and the pitch from Baker and that is on the outside corner for the strikeout to lead off the inning it's pretty caught looking it's gonna bring up Robles one for two with a walk. The lefty singled in his last at bat. And that is hit sharply, but right at the shortstop, Petrov. He throws over to first and gets the out. So two away for the top of the order. Wellington Balsley coming up. And that breaking ball misses. And that is a high foul ball back over my head. One and one's the count to the center fielder. And that is hit sharply into left field. But right there to put it away is Donnie Bendo. And that's going to do it. Three up, three down here in the bottom of the eighth. When we come back, top of the ninth, it will be Flynn Morrison, Shane Jones, and Brandon Wynn. 
college just got affordable. Up to 100% of enrollment fees can be reimbursed for first-time college students taking full-time classes. At Solano Community College, we are taking full advantage of this to further your future. With certificate and degree programs in industrial technology, aeronautics, biotechnology, and many others, Solano Community College is a staple for success. For more information, please contact the Financial Aid Office at 707-864-7000. The idea of this space is to allow students to be creative. You get to design whatever you want, they help you get an idea, and then you can just go from there. From 3D printing, laser cutting, hydraulics, electronics. It's incredible what people have done. We had employers come in and tell us, we need these skills. The teachers are really helpful. Super supportive if you have no experience. I've had a fantastic time. I've learned a lot. Welcome back to Vanden High School, where we have a tie game going into the top of the ninth inning. We've got Marty Cole, Flynn Morrison, and Shane Jones due up here for the Seals. Diego Ramirez is still out there on the mound. And Stephen Babb is coming back to the booth right as we speak. And I am back here in the top of the ninth inning. We're all knotted up at six. Flynn Morrison coming up. Diego Ramirez still towing the rubber for Solano. And that pitch misses as well, so 2 0 2, the catcher Morrison. Quick pitch from Ramirez is in there, inside corner. Two balls and one strike. And that breaking ball is hit through the left side of the infield for a leadoff single. going to bring up Shane Jones. Shane singled in his first at bat. He came into pinch hit back in the seventh. And that pitch just misses. Ramirez looks in and delivers the 1-0 pitch, and that is an off-speed pitch right up the middle. Throwing in is Wellington, throwing into third. Make sure the runners don't advance. So that's two back-to-back singles to lead off the top of the ninth here. That'll bring up the third baseman, Brandon Wynn. Yeah, that's another rough start to an inning for Ramirez. Yeah, that last inning with us. First two runners reached, and then that eventually led to the Seals tying it up. Wynn has reached safely in all of his at-bats as he scores around a bunt. He singled, reached on two errors, and was hit by a pitch. And he's scoring around a bunt again. And he does foul. Doesn't even up the count one and one. Moving these runners over would be huge for the Seals. If you're winning, you definitely want to get that bunt down the third base line, especially with the lefty playing first base in banks, because he can turn that into an out at third base. And there goes the second strike of the at-bat. So we'll see if Wynn sticks with the bunt. Or we'll be swinging away here in a one and two count. It's 
Ramirez gets the signs. And that breaking ball is low. Popping up is Harkey. So that's going to even up the count at 2-2. Two and two. There's two on and no outs. Two and two is the count. And that is hit high into right field. Making his way over is Harwell going over. And it's going to drop. Harwell catches it on a hop. Throws it into second base. Everyone is safe. So that is three singles in a row to load the base with no outs for the top of the order. Center fielder Zach Campbell. That ball was hit too close to the line for Harwell out there in right just to catch up to it. But he did a good job not letting it get past him and save some runs. Yeah, it's definitely a slight break there for the Mudcats. The fact that it w it's less than two outs, the, get the runners had to freeze and make sure that ball landed before they could take off. Campbell's one for five, reached on a fielder's choice, and has a stolen base. And that breaking ball is hit into right field, but this time Harwell's right there. Tagging up is Morrison. He's going to make it home, and no one was covering second. So Jones tagging up is going to make it to uh, – yes. No? No, that was Wynn tagging up, making it to second. Morrison scores. Shane Jones at third. Campbell flies out. That's going to bring up Rob Luhan. Yeah, if you're Harwell, though, you got to make sure the throw is low enough that it, it potentially could be cut off by the cutoff man. It doesn't need to be cut off by the cutoff man. You just have to make sure that runner at first stays put. Yeah, if it was cut off, though, Shane might have scored. That pitch just misses. So one and one to the right fielder, Luhan. Robles should have been over covering second since Pridey was out as the cutoff. And that is a foul tip. So one and two now to Luhan as Ramirez looks in to get the signs and gets set. And that is hit, but softly right there is Robles. Looks the runner's back, throws over to first to get the second out. <laughs> Looks like a little bit of a ball exchange there. So there's two outs. Runners on second and third for the shortstop, Nate Petroff. Nate's tripled, reached on an air, singled, and looks to do some more here in the top of the ninth. That breaking ball inside. It's like Robles was covering second over there and then moving back into position. And that is hit sharply up the middle. Robles is there. Throwing over to first in the dirt, but dug out by Banks to save the run and the inning. Great defense here by Solano in the top half of the ninth to keep it down by one, seven to six, as we head into the bottom of the inning right after this. Hi, my name is Eric Visser. I'm in my fifth year as the athletic director of Solano College. To experience community college and its mission has been an outstanding experience. Solano College has a very rich tradition in intercollegiate athletics dating back to 1947. I'm very proud to uh, communicate that that rich tradition is still being continued with fine young men and women that represent Solano College on and off the court. In the fall we have the volleyball program. We have a very successful women's soccer program. We have both men's and women's basketball. And then we transition to four programs, baseball, of softball, men's women's tennis, and men's and women's swimming. 
It is our mission to excel our programs and our student athletes in academics. All of our student athletes are committed to give back to the community. And we would invite you to be a part of Solano College Athletics by visiting our website www.solanoathletics.com and you feel a warm welcome at Solano. We're back here in the bottom of the ninth and in the top half of the inning, the Seals <coughs> led the inning off with three back-to-back -back singles and they scored one run to take a one-run lead, making it seven to six here. For Solano College Sports Network, I'm Stephen Babb. Joining me in the booth is Nathan Farmer. Looks like there is a defensive substitution for the Seals. Number 44 in left field. See if we can get his name here in just a moment. Peyton Baker still on the Looks hill. Looks like it's uh, Miles Minier. Miles Minier out of Oxnard, California. So leading off here on the bottom of the inning is Josh Medina. Little Drake walk-up music for Medina. He'll be followed up by Harwell and Jack Pridey. And that pitch from Baker. Oh, squaring around a bunt, but fouling that high off the backstop. After Solano, definitely the part of the lineup that you want up when you're down by one in the bottom of the ninth. You've got the heart of the lineup coming up here. The Owen pitch from Baker is hit high down first baseline. Everybody's converging and it drops. <laughs> Nobody's there to cover first. So Harwell, or excuse me, Medina is going to reach safely. It's another miscommunication. We've seen that for the second time today when the pitcher, first baseman, and catcher all close in on a high pop up, but not a lot of people are just a miscommunication. The ball drops again. So Medina will reach on an air, and that's going to bring up James Harwell. Got Isaiah Verrett on deck. And that is a score on the brunt. Then swinging away, and Cole can't handle it. So back-to-back -back errors here in the bottom of the ninth. Tying run on second. Go ahead, run on first. Be interesting to see what Verrett here Verrett does here. We've seen him bunt for a hit a number of times out at Solano College for the Falcons. Haven't seen that yet here in the couple of games we've seen. Yeah, Verrett has some speed. Looks like they're going to talk it over out at the mound again. Hopefully uh, Morrison doesn't get his uh, helmet stuck in the chest protector this time. Yeah, Verrett definitely has an Many tools that he can use out there in the batter's box. I've seen him hit home runs. I've seen him bunt single, sacrifice, walk and strike out. Yeah. So let's <laughs> see what he does here. But I think a great move by the Cats here. A good substitution, a good pinch hit. As they break up the meeting. Ninth inning stretch. So we got no outs. Runners on first and second. Back-to-back -back errors by the Seals. Right-hander Isaiah Verrett. Now the corner infielders are in on the grass, but the middle infielders are back at double play depth. Yeah, Millet over there is way in close. And scoring around a bunt is Isaiah Verrett. He heads it down the third oh, that's baseline. A great bunt. In no man's land. A little miscommunication there again by the Seals. The third baseman there, um, Wynn, was going back to cover the bag. And nobody, everybody just forgot about the ball. That's a one of those situations where you got to think about what your move is going to be before you have to make it. No one, no one going after the ball there. 
So everybody is safe. Isaiah Verrett reaches on a bunt single. And that's going to bring up the power bat of Justin Banks. Justin shot one off the wall for a double in his last at bat. So let's see what he can do here. Nobody out and the base is loaded. And that is chopped right at the first baseman. He juggles it but throws home for the force. And everybody else is safe. So not quite what Banks was trying to do. Nonetheless, it's only one out. Bases remain loaded. For number 32, Christian Harkey. He might have had a play at first to finish off the double play, but definitely uh, smart taking the safe route there. Yeah, it would have been a little difficult for uh, Millet to get back after throwing it in. And that pitch is low. We've seen Harkey have a little bit of pop in his bat with a double back in the second. He's also walked, struck out. And that is there on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Bases loaded, one out. Mudcats down by one. Harkey calls timeout. Spaker was taking his time, scrolling through some signs. Finds one he likes and sets for the 1-1 one -one pitch. And that is hit high out into center field. Campbell's got a beat on it, but he's deep enough that that should score on the tag up. Going over to third is Verrett. Coming in to score is Harwell. So that's a great sacrifice there to tie the game up at seven. It's going to bring up Nick Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer's one for four with an RBI. And that is hit high, foul. Charging over is Millet, and he's not going to get there in time. Yeah, definitely lots of foul ground here. That it was still in play, but it's still very long ways for him to, to run to potentially get up to that one. Verrett definitely has speed at third base, so anything... even remotely through the infield or even shallow outfield, he is coming in to score. And that is a chopper to third base. Right there is Wynn to throw over, and that's going to do it for the bottom of the ninth. But the Mudcats are able to come back and tie it up. So we head into some free baseball extra innings, tied up at seven. Come back right after this. I'm Rusty Mays. I'm one of the instructors here at the Solano Community College Aeronautics Program here at the Net Tree Airport. Here at Solano Community College, we really see them thrive and learn. We have a 100% pass rate with our examiner. I'm Kevin Spolstra, instructor, Solano Community College Aeronautics. At Solano Community College Aeronautics Program, we teach the students aviation maintenance. We teach them the general subjects, the airframe subjects, and the power plant subjects. The students will also be prepared to pass their multiple tests from the FAA. At Solano Community College, we also have a partnership with Delta Airlines. Through Delta Tech Ops, students that complete the program, they will be considered for employment as an aviation maintenance technician. As we head into the top of the 10th inning, we're all tied up at seven. Do up for San Francisco. We've got a Jackson Millet, followed up by Donnie Bendo, and then Marty Cole. Diego Ramirez still on the rubber for the Mudcats. Free baseball time. Wish I would have brought an extra energy drink. Was not expecting this. Pulled the trigger on a little too soon back in the fifth. 
Now we're definitely running out of daylight here. Not, not sure how much longer this game's going to go. The wind's kicking up a little bit as we approach dusk. So the official word from the umpire behind the dish is one more inning. So each team has three outs to get the job done. So Ramirez looks in. It is Jackson Millett, the right-hander up. And that is fouled straight back. So 0-1. Oh and, and that is foul tip right back into the glove of Harkey. So no balls and two strikes. And a big swing and a miss. Ball's in the dirt. Harkey throwing down the first two. Get the out. Starting off the top of the 10th inning with a strikeout. That's going to bring up the left fielder, Donnie Bendo. He had a sacrifice fly to tie it all up. Back in the eighth. And hit a home run to lead off the second. And that breaking ball misses low and inside. I'm sure the Seals wouldn't mind if he stepped into another one here. And that is knee high for a call first strike. The sun is making its way down behind us. And that is it. High into center field. That's Campbell out there to put it away for the second out. Excuse me, no, that's Wellington out there. My eyes are going bad. So that's going to bring up Marty Cole. Marty has struck out three times today, walked and grounded out to the shortstop. So having his struggles at the plate here today. And unable to check that swing, the location might have got him anyway. So 0-1 to Cole. One and one now to the second baseman. And the pitch from Ramirez, that off-speed pitch, just a little low. Two balls and one strike. And the 2-1 pitch from Ramirez, that is hit high, but flared into shallow left field. Coming in is Pfeiffer, and he ends the inning. So a nice 1-2-3 inning for Diego Ramirez. We're going to come back here in the bottom of the 10th, all tied up at 7. The final three outs for the Mudcats. It'll be Pfeiffer, Pridey, and Robles. And we're back in the bottom of the 10th, all tied up at 7. 
It will not be Pfeiffer leading off. It'll be Jason Pride, the second baseman, followed up by the third ba uh, shortstop, Eric Robles. And then we're back to the top of the order with Wellington Balsley. Looks like we got a new pitcher out there for the Seals. Number 44, Miles Minier. Previously, he was out in left field, so he'll be coming in to pitch the bottom half of the inning. Pridey struck out looking his last at bat. He's also got a single with two RBIs today. A quick little discussion out there as Morrison jogs back behind the dish. The tall lefty Minier on the rubber. He gets set. And that fastball is roped into right field, but right there is Luhan making his way over, and he puts it away. Great contact there, but just not far enough away from Luhan. Eric Robles up now, grounded out to short his last at bat. And that is in at the knees, 0-1. The lefty with a wide open stance steps in to an off-speed pitch, 0-2. It's kind of stance that you think you'd see like back in like the 1930s, 1940s. Just kind of one of those weird looking stances. And that is going to be right over Baker's head as the pitcher moves to shortstop for a defensive replacement. So Robles will reach safely with a two strike single. It's going to bring up top of the order Wellington Ballsley. We haven't seen Wellington do a whole lot at the plate here tonight, but he is known to definitely put the ball into play. So we've got one out and one on here for Wellington. And he squares around and then pulls it back, swings. It's down the left field line foul, and no one's going to get it. So 0 and 1 now to Ballsley. I've got some speed over there at first base with Robles. Balsley leads the team in stolen bases with 11, so he is fast as well. Ooh. And that hits him in the helmet. He's going to take a second, <laughs> and he smiles, thumbs up to the dugout. <laughs> and he's happy to make it down to first safely. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody get hit in the head by a pitch, turn around, smile, and give a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, Solano will definitely take it any way they can at this point. So that's going to bring up Josh Medina. I mean, obviously you don't want Wellington to get hurt, but it, it did just look like it just skimmed off the top of his helmet. And that pitch is high. So the Mudcats are in a good spot here with two on and only one out in the bottom of the 10th. So 1 0 count to the big right handed Medina. And that misses high again. Good job there by Morrison to stick with it and not let it get past him. A uh, base hit to the outfield will probably score uh, the runner from second as long as it's not hit too hard right at somebody. And that pitch misses just a little bit high. So we got three balls and no strikes. And some, as you mentioned, some good speed out there on the bases. And there's a walk, a four-pitch walk after hitting Ballsley. So that's going to load the bases with one out. 
It's going to bring up James Harwell. And now for Solani, you just need to fly ball deep enough to score the runner from third. And Harwell already had to sacrifice fly for an RBI today. So here we go as Minier looks in, steps off, doesn't like the signs he's getting from Morrison. Morrison gets back down on the squat, tries again. Minier shakes off the first one, likes the second, and the pitch is low. 1-0 now to Harwell. And the 1-0 pitch, and that is hit into right field, and it looks like that is going to do it for us here tonight at Vanden High School as that RBI single by James Harwell will score Robles from third and will end the game here in the bottom of the 10th. The Solano Mudcats take the game away from the San Francisco Seals by a score of 8-7. So the Mudcats will improve to five and six. The Seals will drop to three and seven. The Mudcats snap a three-game losing streak, and they had a great game out here tonight. But that will do it for us here. So to recap one more time, the Mudcats win eight to seven in the bottom of the tenth over the San Francisco Seals. For the Solano College Sports Network and my partners in the booth tonight, Nathan Farmer as well as Nate Bickay, thank you to all of our camera folks, our producer Brian Nelson, I'm Stephen Babb. The exponential growth from the program from my first year to my third year now, that's what keeps me coming back and keeps me excited and just like fulfills me as a person. It's so impressive and we, we, every time we walk in here you guys are doing something different. It's, it's great. It's nothing but opportunities here and we have sports to cover, we have the equipment. Because the more ambitious you are, the more opportunities you'll have. On the job training is, is huge. You get the hands-on experience. When someone asks who can do it, you know, you can raise your hand and say I can do it. So. Joining the class was the best decision I ever made. Court to Audrey Jones. Audrey for three. And it's good! With 1.3 seconds left on the game clock, Audrey Jones with one of the biggest shots ever. The sky's the limit, really, with what we can do here.